Hey guys, welcome back to a new Delta Force video. Today I'm going to show you my favorite weapons and setups and we're going to get right in with my favorite assault setup. I have showed you my setup for the AKM yesterday already, so if you haven't seen this yet, be sure to check out yesterday's video because I won't include this weapon here again. But instead, I'm going to show you my M4A1 setup. You can find the codes for all of the weapon loadouts I'm talking about in this video in the description below this video, or maybe also in the pinned comment. And what you can do with this, you just use this code, go to loadout and then share loadout, and then enter it right here. And then you can apply the loadout if you have the correct weapon and also if you have unlocked all of the attachments for this weapon. And then you can simply use the exact loadout without having to copy it step by step from this video here. So for the M4A1 I have used the standard barrel combo which gives a bit more range and control. I also calibrated it a bit which I will show you in a second. And I'm also using a laser because for this weapon you have this specific slot up here that only gives you a laser and you can't equip anything else right here. It's completely up to you which color you use, they all have the same stats and the same effect on your weapon. Then I have the Ranger handguard equipped on all of the other slots of the barrel, so everything where you can equip a handguard because it gives you a lot more control, which means more vertical and more horizontal recoil control and also more firing stability. For the muscle, I went with the Sandstorm vertical compensator for extra vertical recoil control. And then at the foregrip, I went with a practical bevel foregrip, which gives you more extra horizontal control. So vertical recoil control is how your weapon moves up and down when shooting. So this is reduced by the muzzle. And then the left and right movement is reduced by this one. I think this is a pretty good combination that I'm using a lot on the weapons. For the magazine, I'm using the polymer mag because it gives you a better handling, which means faster reload time and then also a honey badger, which also increases the reload time. For the grip, I went with this one, and I think it's the only weapon I'm using this, but it opens another slot for a grip mount, and in combination, this grip mount and this grip gives you more control, more handling and more stability. So this is a pretty good combination, at least for this specific weapon. Then on the stock, I use the elite stock, which is what I'm basically using on almost all of my weapons for more control. And then here for the optic, I'm using the holo side. And some of you asked me why I'm not using these risers right here, the Hydra riser, for example. I'm using it on specific weapons, but I'm not using it on this one. And I'm gonna explain you on a different weapon why I'm using it and, and why not. But here I'm not using it because I already have a slot that is only open for flashlights and lasers. So I already have a laser equipped here and I don't need another one, so I don't need the riser as well. Getting into the calibration, which effect it has is basically more muscle velocity, so you can easier hit moving targets, a bit more firing stability, more extra recoil control, and more moving stability. Taking the weapon to the range, it works pretty well when fired from the hip, the reload time is all right and even on distance i think it is pretty okay this weapon is a bit harder to control in general so i think that's a pretty good build here then moving on to the medic here i have two weapons that i prefer which is the uzi and also the scar but the scar is also available on the engineer class so this overlaps here. But we're gonna start with the Uzi, it's a submachine gun, it's pretty fast firing, it's more for close range combat and hip firing, and it's also how I calibrated it. The only thing I've done here is that I'm using the practical long barrel, which gives the weapon more control, what it definitely needs, because it has a strong vertical recoil, and it also gives a bit more range and muscle velocity, which is very helpful when you have to engage with targets on medium range. Then I went with a Poseidon flash hider here, which gives you control and takes a little bit of the accuracy away, but this is mainly for hip fire accuracy, so it doesn't really matter and it's just a little bit. When you're standing right in front of someone, you will still hit them perfectly. And then on the handguard, I went with this one, the performance handguard, because it has a pretty good combination of stats. So it gives you a lot more control, it gives you a little bit of handling, bit of stability and bit 
bit of accuracy and with a normal handguard it might open up more slots for other attachments but I found that this one actually works the best. And then for the magazine I'm pretty happy with the normal one because I don't really want to take the lower ADS speed and lower reload time of these ones and instead I went with Honey Badger for faster reload time. The stock is again the Elite Core stock for more control and here on the optic it's always the holo side for me. What you can do here as well though and that's what I meant with the risers, is equipped the Hydra riser and this opens up a slot for another laser. So then you will be able to equip a laser in addition to this, which is something you cannot do anymore with this handguard. So that's something you can do as well and will also increase your hip fire and everything a little bit again. So I played the weapon without it and it works pretty well, but if this is not enough for you, you can also use this build here. I'm gonna copy this one for you in the description below. Taking it to the range, hip fire is, I think, incredibly good. I love it, but you can still hit targets very precisely on mid-range. Next up, we have the SCAR battle rifle, and I think this is actually one of the most beginner-friendly weapons in the game, even without any attachments, you haven't unlocked them yet. But if you've unlocked all of the attachments, what I would recommend to use is, again, we have this riser meta here, so you can use an optic plus this hydro riser, plus you have a laser sight on top here, because what you can do then when you have the laser here is equip all of your barrel with these hand guards again. So you have the Ranger handguard for more control, equip this over and over as much place as you have on your barrel. I'm using the practical barrel again, it gives you a little bit more control and again a little bit more range and muscle velocity. Range might not be so much important here on the scar, but the muscle velocity is and I think it makes it a little bit easier to engage on longer distances. Then again I'm using the Sandstorm vertical compensator for extra vertical control and then again on the foregrip the practical bevel foregrip for the extra horizontal control. Then again, no special magazine, but this fast mech pouch thingy right here. And here I also went with the rear grip, with the AR heavy grip that opens this grip mount. And it also opens up more control, handling and stability and basically twice because they both have the same stats. And then at the stock I went with the advanced combat stock because it also gives you more control, handling, stability and accuracy and I also calibrated it. So for the calibration I went for more firing stability, for more aiming stability while breathing so your weapon is not swaying that much when you aim down sights but not hold breath and then for a lot more moving stability which means when you ADAD your weapon is more stable and I think especially on PC you do this a lot. Taking this one to the range, hipfire is almost the same on all weapons, <laughs> at least it feels like it is, but you still have a pretty good accuracy on medium and long range. And I think for a scar this works pretty well and it actually has very low vertical recoil. Then moving on to the engineer class, it's again the scar and then I'm also using the G3 and this is actually my absolute favorite for the engineer class. I don't know why, but I really love this one. I loved it in the alpha and it still feels amazing. So what I'm using here as well is this Hydra riser with a laser sight and also my you know, favorite holo side. Again, this combination works pretty well here and you also don't have to take away a slot for these hand guards to use a laser sight. So again, for the barrel I'm using, here I'm using the enhanced standard barrel, but it also comes with more range and muscle velocity and also more control. And here I packed everything full with these ranger hand guards again for more control. This weapon really needs it. And here also the Sandstorm Vertical Compensator for extra vertical control and again the same bevel foregrip for the extra horizontal control. Again, nothing new at the magazines, same combination here. And for the rear grip, I didn't use anything here. I still stick to the default one because the two ones that are available, they don't really give me anything that I want for my weapon. So I better stick to the default one here. And for the stock, again, the Elite Core stock, more control 
and a little bit of calibration that gives you more firing stability, more extra control and more moving stability. Going on to the range it looks a bit ridiculous with this riser, but I feel like, I mean, on hip fire, it's not really a hip fire weapon. It still works pretty well, but what it's actually made for is this range. And that's how it works incredibly good. Even on longer range, this recall is so, so low and you can really laser people on this range and yeah, I, I really love their weapon. <laughs> and then lastly, we have our recon. And here I also have two weapons. One is the R93 sniper and one is the mini M14. This is my probably second favorite weapon in the game. I really love to play this one when I'm playing as a sniper. It might not be the best weapon in its default setup, but once you equip this different frame system here, this turns into a completely different weapon. And that's also how you should play it. So with this, advanced frame system you have more control more handling and it expands the modification slots so then you can equip all of the good stuff here all of the hand guards and everything and that's also what you should do so for the barrel i went with the enhanced barrel to give it a bit more range and muscle velocity this is definitely necessary on this weapon it also maybe control not so much but it gives you more control so we're not saying no to this then again, of course, the Ranger handguard for more control on both sides. And also here I'm using the Poseidon flash hider for more control. The Sandstorm is available here with the extra vertical recoil, but then you don't have a foregrip that gives you extra horizontal recoil. So I felt like I wanted to balance this a little bit. So I went with the extra control here and then with the extra vertical control right here. I'm not using a bigger magazine again. And then for the stock, I also went with the Elite Core stock. I think this is probably the perfect stock for all weapons. And then one more word to the optic and also to the risers. I'm not using a riser here for a specific reason, because when I equip a riser here, this Hydra riser, it still opens up a slot for maybe a laser and a small optic. But I don't want a small optic on this because it's more of a weapon for medium and long range. So I'm skipping this one. I also skip on the laser side and instead go with the ACOG side, specifically with this one, because this is the only side that has a three and a half times magnification that still doesn't have any scope glint. All other ones, even this adjustable scope has scope glint. So I would not recommend to use these ones. Go with this instead. This is an amazing side. It fits perfectly to the weapon and it doesn't have any scope glint. With the calibration, I got a little bit more muscle velocity, which is always helpful in marksman rifles to hit targets on longer range that are moving. And then I have more firing stability and more moving stability, which I think especially for marksmen is helpful as well. Taking this one to the range, the ADS time is all right. Maybe could be a little bit faster, but I always felt like it is okay. And then you have, I think, a pretty good stability on the weapon. The hip fire is okay as well. If you have to, you can even fire it from the hip, but it's more made for longer ranges, for medium and for long range. And then lastly, we have the R93 sniper, and this is actually my go-to sniper rifle in this game. You don't have many attachment slots, but you also don't need them, because what I only went with is the short barrel, and this gives you an increased fire rate and better handling. And handling is also ADS time, and this is actually all that this weapon needs, increased fire rate and increased ADS time. For the muscle, I went with the Sandstorm Vertical Compensator again for extra vertical recoil control, because I think that's what the weapon most benefits from. I didn't use a special magazine as usual. And then here for the optic, I also went with the ACOG again, simply because it doesn't have a scope gland and I don't want to give away my position on the battlefield. In calibration, you can only calibrate the barrel and it gives you a little bit more muscle velocity, so easier to hit targets on range. And the muscle velocity is fairly slow on this one, but nothing that you cannot get used to. And a little bit of firing stability takes away a little bit of ADS speed, but that's barely noticeable and it's still enough for this weapon. Taking it to the range, I think the ADS speed is still pretty all right. The weapon is still one shot headshot even with a shorter barrel, but it fires a lot faster than it did before. Actually a very, very good sniper rifle for all kinds of ranges, close range because you can fire and 
aim down sight so fast and also medium to long range. And that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this overview of my personal favorite weapons in Delta Force right now. And if you found it helpful, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. And I'm going to see you in the next one. I'm Catwoman and you are awesome.